My masseuse saw my husband and mentioned me going with my brother, but I don't have a brother. I feel like greed is something that can never get you far in life. That is exactly what happened to me. I got too greedy and decided to take such steps that led to harming my relationship, step after step. It was all my mistake, and there is no one to blame for my actions. Let me explain everything from where it started and how it changed my life. I am Julia, age 37, and married to Isaac, age 43, for two years. We did not have kids as we both wanted to focus on our careers. We married late as we were both so engrossed in making it big in life that we almost forgot about marriage. We met a couple of times and saw that our work ethics aligned perfectly, and that is why we decided to marry each other. We both come from similar backgrounds and share the same values, which has helped strengthen our bond. Our decision to prioritize our careers has allowed us to build a strong foundation for our future together. After six months, I realized that I needed something more in a marriage than just focusing on our careers. I felt the intimacy diminish and I felt unsatisfied as a woman. I started pleasuring myself on my own, but after a point that got boring as well. I knew that I had to figure something out for my sexual frustration. I started looking for hookups and one night stands to satisfy me. I knew that this was not a permanent solution, but as long as it worked, I was fine with it. Isaac was not the kind of person who would understand my sexual problems and address them. I did not feel any guilt in doing this, as I felt I had every right to keep my body happy. I eventually realized that seeking temporary fixes was not fulfilling and decided to explore other options. After some research, I discovered the benefits of self-love and exploring my own desires without relying on others for satisfaction. This journey of self-discovery has helped me understand my needs better and find more sustainable ways to address my sexual frustration. I was at a late night meeting with some of my colleagues who suggested we get a few drinks at a bar a couple of blocks away to celebrate getting the deal. I knew that my night was anyway going to be uneventful if I headed home to Isaac. It would be the same episodes of the late night show and then dozing off in bed. At least here I would have a chance to shake a leg with some young blood. I hopped on the opportunity and headed along after texting Isaac that I would be coming home late. He never bothered to ask more and I never gave him further explanations, and that's how our relationship worked. As I entered the bar, the lively music and energetic crowd immediately lifted my spirits. I ordered a drink and joined in on the fun, grateful for the chance to let loose and enjoy myself for a change. All the young blood was checking out the hot bartender, so I decided to check what the fuss was all about. He flirted with me while making my drink. I could tell that he was into cougars and loved to be objectified. I had no problem with it and actually enjoyed a naughty conversation after a really long time. I was sloshed by the time I got home and had no clue how I even managed to get up in bed the next morning. The bartender's charm was undeniable, and I found myself drawn to his confidence. Despite the hangover, I couldn't help but smile at the memory of our playful banter. I had flashes of last night where I lost myself and was making out with the bartender at the back of his car. I never let my guard down that easily, but something about him attracted me towards him. I decided to meet him in person again and see if it was just the alcohol or there was actually something more going on. As we talked over coffee, I realized there was a genuine connection between us that went beyond the initial physical attraction. I was pleasantly surprised by how easy it was to open up to him and share my thoughts and feelings. I never felt the need to have a sugar baby until I met Jerome. He was young and fun to be with. He made me feel younger than I was, and whenever I was with him, people believed me to be younger than I looked, which boosted my confidence. However, as our relationship progressed, I realized that having a sugar baby was not just about feeling young, but also about experiencing new adventures and enjoying life to the fullest. Jerome brought excitement and spontaneity into my life that I never knew I was missing. Lately, while having sex, Jerome had been complaining about his back pain during a few positions. I was concerned as sex was what he was best at. Not being able to do a few things that I enjoyed was pissing me off. The sole reason I wanted to be with was to feel young and for great sex. I decided to have an open and honest conversation with Jerome about his back pain and how it was affecting our intimacy. I expressed my concerns and asked if there were any ways we could still enjoy each other without causing him discomfort. 
I suggested trying different positions or incorporating more foreplay to see if that helped alleviate the pain. Ultimately, I wanted to find a solution that worked for both of us so we could continue to have a fulfilling and satisfying sex life. He complained about me not taking him to a massage when I get one every month. I tried to explain to him that me and my husband go to the same place and it would be too risky to take him there. He whined like a child and I had no choice but to give in. I ended up taking him to a different massage place, but he complained the entire time about it not being as good as mine. It was frustrating to deal with his constant complaints, but I wanted to keep the peace in our relationship. I realized that Jerome had been grumpy even after his massage session, that it was not a VIP place like mine, and he was not fully satisfied with the massage. He still was adamant to go to the same place and experience what I experience every month. He also mentioned that I become a younger version of myself after every massage and he wanted to experience the same. I decided to compromise and accompany him to the same massage place, hoping that he would see it in a different light. Perhaps experiencing it together would help him understand why I enjoyed it so much. I hoped that sharing this experience would bring us closer together and alleviate his dissatisfaction. I had a monthly appointment with my masseuse as usual and decided to take Jerome along. I knew that I needed to be careful, so I introduced him as my little brother, as that would stop any gossip or rumors from spreading. Jerome seemed to enjoy the surprise, and it was nice to have him there for support. Plus, having him along made the appointment feel more like a fun outing rather than just a routine visit. The masseuse was understanding and didn't ask any questions, allowing us to relax and enjoy the experience. Jerome even mentioned how much he appreciated being included and felt like part of the family. Isaac also had an appointment after a week and probably mentioned that I was there last week with my brother. He soon realized that I did not have a brother and wondered who it could have been that I had to lie about it. As Isaac pondered over this, he couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off about the situation. He decided to investigate further to uncover the truth behind the mysterious mention of a brother. Isaac's curiosity led him to ask around discreetly trying to gather any information that could shed light on the situation. As he delved deeper into the mystery, he began to uncover a web of lies and deceit that left him questioning everything he thought he knew about the appointment. When Isaac mentioned it, I realized that I did not think it through before taking Jerome to my masseuse. I did not have a backstory to support my claim. Isaac knew all my distant cousins, so there was no way I could lie about it. I blurted out that he was an office colleague who I call my baby brother. Jerome played along with the story, adding that we worked in different departments, but had a close bond. Thankfully, Isaac seemed to buy it and didn't ask any further questions about our relationship. I breathed a sigh of relief when Isaac did not push further on it. At least for now, I could take a break from Isaac's questioning, but I knew that I needed to plan a careful exit for Jerome from my workplace so that Isaac does not notice him further missing from my office outings and other corporate events. I made a mental note to start strategizing how to smoothly transition Jerome out of my workplace without raising suspicion. It was crucial to maintain the facade of our close bond while ensuring Isaac didn't catch on to our deception. Isaac had thrown a party in my honor for receiving the highest achiever award at my company. He invited a lot of people from my work and other potential investors in his business. It was a very boring event, so we decided to skip calling friends and family and have a separate party for them. We wanted to make sure everyone had a good time and didn't feel obligated to stay at the first party. By having a separate gathering, we were able to focus on enjoying the company of our loved ones without feeling overwhelmed by a large crowd. I was shocked to see Jerome at the party. I tried to talk to him alone, but it was very difficult as Isaac hardly left my side. I did not have my phone on me to send him a text asking him what was going on. Jerome seemed to be avoiding me, which made me even more curious about what was going on. Eventually, I managed to slip away from Isaac's watchful eye and corner Jerome for a private conversation. But before he could tell me what was going on, Isaac announced my name and the spotlight was already on me. I had no choice but to make my way towards Isaac, who was beaming with pride. I pushed my apprehensions and smiled while walking towards Isaac. I knew I would have to wait a little longer to find out what was going on with Jerome. As I approached Isaac, I couldn't help but wonder what surprise he had in store for me. Isaac held my hand and started singing my praises and talked about how proud he was of my achievements. 
I breathed a sigh of relief and assumed that he might have called Jerome after knowing that he quit, as I mentioned that he was like a brother to me. I was grateful for Isaac's support and understanding, knowing that he would always have my back. It was a comforting feeling to have someone like him in my corner during difficult times. I leaned in and kissed him for his support. He told me that there was a special surprise waiting for me and I need to be patient till it is revealed. I couldn't help but feel excited at the thought of a surprise from Isaac, knowing he always had a way of making me feel better. I eagerly waited for the surprise to be revealed, feeling grateful for his presence in my life. He then told everyone that there was another person who had been by my side throughout when I was having a hard time at work. I hoped that Isaac would take the name of my manager so that I could score some points with him. Unfortunately, he mentioned Jerome, who was like a baby brother to me and who kept lifting my spirits every time I was in a bad mood. I could see everyone looking confused as no one had an idea who this person was. Isaac then asked him to come on the stage and don't be so shy about it. Jerome hesitantly made his way to the stage, looking slightly embarrassed. Everyone kept whispering who it was as no one had a clue where he worked. Isaac questioned why no one had a clue who Jerome was, as he was such an important part of my journey. He started asking everyone from my work if anyone had a clue who he was and how he helped me. I knew that this was going to be embarrassing if someone remembered him from a few months at the bar. I wished that no one had such a good memory when one of my subordinates mentioned that he looked very similar to a bartender we met at a bar a few months back. I mentally cursed her for opening her mouth. Now I knew the reason why Isaac organized this party and why Jerome had been invited. It all made sense now. Isaac had orchestrated this party to confront me about my past interactions with Jerome. I felt a sinking feeling in my stomach as I realized the truth was about to come out. The atmosphere had become tense and everyone could figure out that this was not a success party, but a revenge party. My husband just wanted to embarrass me in front of all the people I worked with and let them know the kind of person I was. I could imagine my career going for a toss after all this drama. I could feel the eyes of my colleagues on me, judging and whispering amongst themselves. It was clear that my husband's intentions were to ruin my professional reputation and credibility. I knew that there was not much I could do to salvage the situation at this point. I could see everyone feeling restless and wanting to leave as early as possible. When we walked down to meet and greet people, I saw everyone actively trying to avoid me and making excuses to leave. I knew that this was not something they were expecting. I was a role model for a lot of my subordinates, and I could see the disappointment in their eyes for me not being an ideal person. I realized that my behavior had let down those who looked up to me, and I knew I needed to make things right and regain their respect. It was a humbling experience that taught me the importance of being consistent in my actions and setting a positive example for others. I tried to talk to Jerome after this first-hand embarrassment that I had to face. Isaac was the one protecting Jerome, which I found quite weird. I mean, Jerome was equally involved in the affair with me, so how come Isaac was being sweet to him and mistreating me? I couldn't wrap my head around it. How could Isaac be so friendly with a man who slept with his own wife? I decided to confront Isaac about his behavior and ask him directly why he was being protective of Jerome. It was a confusing situation that left me feeling hurt and betrayed by both men involved. After the party, if I could call it that, surprisingly, Isaac did not ask me to leave but instead asked me to sit in the car so that we could go home. I was confused when Jerome made his way into the car as well. I thought his job to embarrass me was done and he had no more business with us. Little did I know that Isaac had paid Jerome a huge sum of money to reveal about our relationship and let him know everything that had been going on. Jerome's presence in the car made me uneasy, and I realized that Isaac had orchestrated this entire situation to confront me about our relationship. As Jerome started speaking, I knew that things were about to get even more complicated. Isaac made sure that I did not leave the house without notice. He told me that he had a lot of other stuff that he could use against me if I tried to be smart and pull off something unusual. I had no choice but to follow Isaac's orders if I did not want any more damage to my reputation. Isaac had caged me in the house along with Jerome, who had been paid well to stick around as long as Isaac pleases and reveal everything that he is aware of about my true nature. I felt like a wild animal caught by a hunter and had nowhere to go. 
Jerome's presence only heightened my sense of entrapment, as his loyalty to Isaac seemed unwavering. Every passing moment felt suffocating, as I desperately searched for a way to escape their grasp. After a week, there was a party organized for our family as a get-together to celebrate my success. I was dreading it already, as I was still not out of the shock from last week's party. I didn't even want to imagine what Isaac was going to pull off along with Jerome this time. I did not want my family to be a part of this embarrassment, but I knew that Isaac would make sure that all my family gets to know about my actions and would take pleasure in belittling me in front of all of them. I decided to mentally prepare myself for whatever surprises they had in store, hoping to maintain my composure and not let their antics ruin the celebration. Despite my apprehension, I knew that ultimately my family's support and love would overshadow any embarrassment Isaac and Jerome could bring. Ed. The family got together at a farmhouse which had no internet and no network in the area. It was very difficult for people to not talk about the current events as they did not have their phones to keep them busy. I could tell that there was an aura of questions following me everywhere I went. It seemed like everyone was eager to discuss the latest news and updates, making it challenging to escape the constant chatter. Isaac did not even try to introduce Jerome to anyone and made him follow me everywhere I went. Hell, we three were even sharing the room at night, which led to a lot of raised eyebrows from both families. Isaac was very tactful in ignoring people's stares and questions, but I would easily get intimidated by their stares and try to give an explanation. I mean, what could I even say to them? That this is the guy I had been sleeping with and cheating on my husband with? I really had no good explanation, so I would stammer and just rush out of people's sight. I spent as much time away from family outdoors alone, just walking around without direction, as even my room was occupied either by Isaac or Jerome. I even tried avoiding mealtimes with the entire family, but Isaac would not let me. I could see my sister trying to corner me to ask what was going on between us. I was successful enough to keep avoiding her for the most part. One day, Isaac finally gathered everyone around and said that he was ready to answer questions that everyone had been trying to get answers to. I felt a sense of dread wash over me as I realized that the moment of truth was finally here. I knew that I couldn't avoid the conversation any longer and would have to face the consequences of my actions. He called Jerome and announced him as my steady boyfriend, who I had been seeing behind his back for almost six months now. He said that Jerome was a sweet, jobless, and ambitious guy who I lured into having an affair by showering him with expensive gifts and treats. He accused me of being manipulative and deceitful, claiming that I had been leading Jerome on while still in a relationship with him. My heart sank as I realized the depth of his hurt and betrayal. I could see everyone's eyes turn towards me and the shame that my family had to face because of me. My sister was furious and slapped me before I could even say anything. I tried to explain that it was all a misunderstanding and that I never intended to hurt anyone, but my words fell on deaf ears. The room was filled with tension and anger, leaving me feeling isolated and ashamed. My sister started her accusations that I was the one who was very sure of Isaac when I married him. I fought with her saying that he the right fit for me as he thinks and reacts like me, and that is what I was looking for. She then blamed me for cheating on him in such a short time. I should have discussed and tried to make things work or spoken to someone about not being happy in the marriage. She told me that I brought disgrace to the whole family and she was disgusted by me. She said that she couldn't believe I would give up so easily on my marriage without even trying to make it work. I felt hurt and betrayed by her harsh words, but deep down I knew that only I could truly understand what was best for me in my relationship with Isaac. I could see everyone have the same look in their eyes. I knew that anything I said would not make them understand how lonely I felt during this whole time in my marriage. I knew that saying anything would just work against me, and the best thing to do right now was to stay quiet and explain my situation when emotions were not this high. I decided to take a step back and wait for a calmer moment to express my feelings and thoughts. It was important for me to communicate effectively without causing further conflict or misunderstanding. When I looked at what Isaac was doing, I was surprised that he was sharing his stories with everyone with Jerome by his side. I never expected Jerome to be the kind of person to be liked by Isaac. There was no way Isaac was genuinely friends with Jerome, and it was just the money that he was paying Jerome that was holding them together. 
I had always thought Isaac was too self-absorbed to have genuine friendships. It was clear that money played a significant role in their relationship, overshadowing any real connection between them. I knew that Isaac might have promised a hefty amount to Jerome for doing all this, as there was no way Jerome would agree to be pitted against our families to face humiliation. Everyone walked out of the room one after the other, after listening to the stories Jerome had been sharing regarding our affair. No one even wanted to look at me, and that hurt my feelings. I was always the pride of my family to have achieved a lot all on my own. I could all that vanish into thin air due to a single mistake. I felt the weight of disappointment and shame heavy on my shoulders as I watched my reputation crumble before my eyes. It was a harsh reminder of how fragile success can be in the face of one misstep. I was always there in difficult times with my family, but now that I needed support, there was no one on my side. I felt betrayed by my own family. No one was even interested in knowing my side of the story, which made me really sad. I realized that sometimes, even those closest to us can turn their backs when we need them the most. It was a painful lesson in understanding who truly stands by us during our darkest moments. I don't remember when I fell asleep thinking about all the good times I had with my family in this very own farmhouse. Everything looked so distant and ages ago. When I woke up, there was no trace of a person. I was stranded alone in this big house all by myself. I could not see my family or Isaac or Jerome. I ran out and saw that all the vehicles had left me behind. There was no cell reception to call for help. It was late at night and I did not have a choice but to stay the night and think of getting some help in the morning. As I wandered through the empty rooms, memories flooded back of the happy times I had with my family in this very farmhouse. The silence was deafening and a sense of unease settled in as I realized I was truly alone. I woke up early the next morning as I knew that I had to walk a few miles to reach the nearest village from where I could ask for help to get back to the city. I put on my shoes and made my way to the main door. To my surprise, it was locked from the outside. I started banging the door as I was very sure that it was unlocked last night. I was not sure if Isaac was back to continue his torture by locking me inside. The thought of being locked up with very little supply of food and water was creeping me out. I was scared to keep the door unlocked in case it was some burglars who were trying to sneak in. I quickly searched for another way out, but all the windows were securely locked. Panic started to set in as I realized I was trapped inside with no way to escape. Desperation took over as I frantically looked for any possible solution to get back into the city. So that I started screaming for help from the small vent that was in the kitchen. I could hear someone walking right outside and begged to help me out. I was right that it was Isaac. He asked me if I had enjoyed myself this week with all the success and popularity that I had gained recently. I told Isaac that I learned my lesson and would like to pay for my mistakes. He told me that Jerome was such a nice and decent man to share everything that we did together with him. There were things that he recently learned and was not willing to let go so easily. I told Isaac that I am willing to agree to any demands he had if he let me out of here and left me alone. I wanted nothing to do with him anymore. He told me that he would have been happier if I was honest with him about it from the start. I did not have to complicate it so much and force him to take such steps. I realized then that honesty was the best policy and that being straightforward from the beginning could have prevented this situation. Isaac eventually agreed to let me go, but not without expressing his disappointment in my lack of transparency. I left, feeling relieved but also regretful for not being more open with him earlier. I promised to leave him alone and never come back in his life. I did not even look back and ran as fast as I could before he changed his mind. I went to the village and called a friend to pick me up. No one that I knew wanted anything to do with me, which was very evident by the way they spoke. I called a taxi and rushed home. I packed whatever I thought would be important and fled before Isaac showed up. I was terrified to run into him as I did not want to imagine what he would do to me again. I drove for hours until I reached a small town where I could start fresh and rebuild my life away from Isaac's reach. The fear of him finding me again lingered in the back of my mind, but I knew I had to keep moving forward. I finally found a shabby area where I could live for a few months under the radar. I knew that my family would never support me after all that I had put them through. I had pulled out as much cash as I could to avoid any traces of Isaac finding me. I had nothing better to do apart from holding myself in this house, 
and waiting for a couple of months before I felt safe to walk out. I decided to share my story as a way to keep myself busy and think about everything I had done wrong to end up here. This would be a better way to know where I had gone wrong and not repeat the same mistakes. Reflecting on my past actions and decisions, I realized that sharing my story could also serve as a cautionary tale for others who may find themselves in similar situations. It was a way for me to not only pass the time, but also potentially help others avoid the same fate. Thank you for showing interest in my story and listening to the blunders I made in my life. I hope this helps someone else to avoid ruining their life.